it's um, and it's on a subject that I've been working for um, some time now, and it has to do with uh, safety of uh, health ID. Uh, so it's, it continues on a series of presentations uh, that I have um, given before. Um, so just a brief overview of um, uh, the presentation. First of all, a brief overview of what we mean by health ID, then why it is not innocuous, what are the problems with health ID when it comes to safety, uh, then why do we need to do some, something about it? Uh, what do we mean by operational assurance of um, health ID? And then uh, I'll uh, mention a few ways forward. Um, right, uh, first of all, we have things like electronic patient records, uh, picture archiving and communication systems, computerized uh, provider order entries. Uh, so many different um, um, health ID systems that have uh, allowed us, have provided new capabilities. Uh, so, um, they have contributed to an improvement in safety. We have fewer medication errors because of uh, things are being automated. Uh, we have critical values, value alerts. Um, we have new capabilities like exchange of accurate record, uh, records between healthcare providers, uh, reduction of tests um, um, that we put uh, the patient to uh, because all practitioners um, have access. Um, at least um, um, in an, an ideal world. Um, we have an increased throughput, better coordination between um, <coughs> healthcare practitioners and quicker and more cost effective healthcare. But um, there are a few problems with it. Um, there are indubitable death benefits, however, introduction of health IT itself has introduced a new <coughs> class of um, issues and challenges. So, first of all, how does software and IT fail? So, it's a little bit different to what we're being used to um, because um, software does not physically exist. So, it's um, zeros and ones and, you know, this is a, a piece of code of software. It's in uh, hexadecimal. Um, so, software does provide information uh, based on which an action will perform, which action will make call, will could cause uh, a harm to the patient. So software provides um, the basis for decisions or directly commands another action that can harm people. And that's um, a, a, a big challenge for software because it's, it's quite inconspicuous and we don't see it. And, and, and often the different combinations of failures that need to take place before we actually see something manifesting as, as harm is, is very obscure and it's not uh, very um, uh, evident and direct as in other cases. Uh, so I have an example of uh, health IT risks. So uh, in migration between uh, an old system and a new system, a new prescription system, the engineers responsible did a mistake of mapping these two uh, uh, substances, so quinine and quinidine. Um, so uh, I'm not a clinician, I'm not a clinician, so I don't know what the effects would be, but I'm sure that mixing up the wrong drugs uh, uh, can be bad. Um, so when the engineers programmed the new system, uh, they actually listed quinine as, as this uh, substance. Uh, we have other examples. Um, so um, a clinician um, ordered an injection when they meant to administer uh, treatment inter, inter, intravenously. And that was a mistake because they selected the wrong item from a drop down menu. So they clicked the mouse, the mouse uh, you know, left one centimeter from the target and they clicked the wrong delivery method. Um, a physician ordered mitigation to be discontinued. The order did not go cross over to the pharmacy system. The patient received extra, uh, an extra, uh, an eight extra doses. Um, and there's uh, entered an order for a patient to have an electrocardiogram. The order was not received. So these are problems, you know, uh, delayed, uh, um, delayed delivery of healthcare, um, overdoses of um, uh, drugs, and there are many more mistakes. So um, in a GP, the patient was feeling a bit low, perhaps a side effect from uh, uh, from the treatment uh, from medicine. Um, but then, the nurse, when using the system, accidentally entered a code which meant dis dis depressive disorders and anxiety disorders. So they had probably some sort of side effect because they entered the wrong code after a system update, 
the patient was, uh, it, it kicked, it triggered a new pathway for the patient uh, that uh, had to go, um, 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 had to take place for two weeks, but this triggered a quality outcomes framework uh, um, variable and then they were able to, to trace that. Um, another GP, um, they tried to override the dosage, but somehow um, they typed the exclamation mark and then at the pharmacy when they printed the label, the exclamation mark looked like one. So instead of uh, giving 20 units, they were uh, prescribing 120 units. Um, a surgeon, during, the, in a, while, uh, during an operation in the operating room, uh, tried to access a patient's radi radiology study, uh, but the display would only show a blue screen. Surprise, surprise. Um, and the patient's time under anesthesia was extended <coughs> while trying to figure this out. Um, pharmacists and their medication orders for the incorrect patient. Um, and then the incorrect <coughs> weight of the patient was entered on admission as 40 kilograms, whereas the patient actually weighed 40 pounds. So you can imagine the uh, dosage mistakes here, and we're talking about a, a child here. Yeah? So uh, uh, a dosage will have an impact. So it's not like software, you know, bits, zeros, uh, uh, and ones will uh, um, somehow escape the PC and start killing people. Uh, but the effects of failures and IT-related failures have some uh, effect on the treatment. It may be uh, 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 the cause for giving the wrong medicine, it may be de uh, uh, the cause for delayed treatment, it may be the cause for treating the wrong person. So we need to be able to understand these kind of failures. Um, I know this sounds a little bit, uh, um, sometimes, a bit pessimistic, so I try to light up the presentation a little bit. So this is another um, input-output data error um, in a, a coffee shop where they write names. So someone said that uh, his uh, name was Mark with a C, and that's what uh, he got. Um, so there have been a number of studies on uh, safety impact of health IT. So this is a study from the ECRI Institute. And actually, they analyzed a number of events. And you can see here that about 6% uh, uh, of the events did affect the patient. And 2% uh, and of the events, actually, uh, the, in this case, the error may have contributed to or resulted in patient's death. So actually, we have about 6% of events that caused harm to the patient and another uh, about 40% of events that actually reached the patient and there was a need for some kind of intervention. Uh, so interventions are a way of protecting ourselves about this kind of failures, but we need to be able to understand what these failures are and design uh, interventions to specifically target them. Uh, we have more data. Um, these are uh, data provided by the um, Health and Social Care Information Center. Center. Uh, uh, so based on about a, a thousand events, um, they listed the types of uh, causes. Um, and you can see that the technical issues are a big part of these, of these problems. Um, and we have other issues like uh, data interchange, functional problems, so uh, IT not doing what it was supposed to do. Human factor is a big part of the pie. So, um, sometimes we have the tendency to look at a piece of software saying, and, and, <coughs> and actually jump to the conclusion that it was us, it was our fault, uh, because we did something wrong. But it is now considered that when we build a system, when we, build, when we, we manufacture IT systems, we need to consider these human factor issues. So, for example, if we're trying to choose delivery method and we have a very uh, uh, small uh, pull-down menu, that will be difficult uh, for a clinician uh, to use, particularly under uh, circumstances of pressure, um, if there are time constraints and so on. Um, so, what do we need to do with all this information? So, there are these issues. Um, we need to understand how big of a problem this is. Um, we have a number of issues on this. We don't have good studies that show us, okay, 6% uh, uh, of IT-related events 
uh, may cause uh, harm to the patient. But how much, what's the proportion of the entire um, health-related events, uh, adverse, related, uh, adverse events, the IT contributes to? And that we don't know very well. Um, there are a number of reasons for this. Uh, root cause analysis often performed to adverse events uh, neglects contributing factors. Um, so the IT may uh, often enable another mistake which is considered the root cause and not the IT itself. And, 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 and we miss that. Then we have issues with reporting. Um, at the moment, it's voluntary. Um, near misses are not always seen and are not always reported. Um, and then we have um, a conflicting mix of uh, type of causes. So um, I showed you the previous uh, pie chart. The technical bit was uh, quite a, a big portion of, of, of events. But other studies show the technical bit to be very small. So now, either the two organizations uh, operate on an entirely different basis, or whoever performed the analysis uh, used different criteria to, allow to, to, to assess what type of, of failure we had. And we need to be a bit more uniform. Um, appreciation of IT contribution is something important. Some issues are not considered safety critical when we do studies. So what about disrupting the workflow of clinicians? Is this uh, uh, safety critical? Many studies say no. We don't count that. However, you know, if, if there's a time pressure and you need to, to treat patients and you have to reboot the system or the printers are not working or the network is down, this may be uh, uh, um, an extra cause for, er for error. We have delays, we have overloading personnel, frustrating personnel, and so on. Um, there was another study more recent um, by the ECRI Institute, again, um, and actually by analyzing 300,000 events, so it's quite big, they list data integrity failures with health information technology systems as the top patient safety concern for 2014. So something is definitely there. Uh, there is a lot of concern, but we need more analysis and more data on that. And even if we do have that, sometimes the reaction is not the one that one would expect. So this is one way to look at safety. Um, you know, we try to avoid um, uh, dealing with the issue, um, saying, you know, we have other priorities. But whether we choose to deal with it or not, the issue is there. So we need to do something about it at some point. And it's better to do it early, before everything gets digital, before we use IT for everything, and then we're, before, uh, you know, we're very surprised by the amount of things that go wrong, than to, to wait for that moment. Um, and actually, we need to um, know the absolute contribution of IT to patient safety, but also we need to ask ourselves, is there anything we can do at all to remove unnecessary risk? So if we found that we could save one patient by spending 100 pounds, would we do that? You know, statistically, that's insignificant, uh, if I may so say so, but, you know, we would spend the money. So we need to understand if these risks are necessarily present. If not, we should do something about it, the, regardless of, of, of the absolute percentage to which IT contributes to patient safety. And actually, we need to balance the effort uh, we put into analyzing health IT and the benefits and, uh, and, and that we get, the actual risk reduction. So I'm not suggesting that we should spend millions of pounds and finding ourselves uh, that, okay, uh, we reduced uh, patient safety by uh, 0.1%. Yeah. Uh, we need to, to balance things and we need to be effective. Um, so let's have a look at uh, operational ass assurance. Um, I do see this phrase very often. Um, safety is our first priority. Um, it, it's worth um, thinking, uh, you, it, you know, uh, how? How is safety the first priority? What do you do about it? Um, because we value it very much. Yes, okay, so what do you do about it in terms of actually designing the service that you provide? Uh, we comply to these standards. Okay, but then again, you're not answering the question. How do you deal with the risks? And that's the real challenge with assurance. We need to justify why we believe the services <coughs> we provide are good enough, are safe enough. 
And actually, we need to be convincing about it. Is actually a PL of standards good enough uh, to, to, to justify uh, um, confidence in, in safe service? Maybe, maybe not. Um, some other people will say, you know, it's a very expensive system that I contracted. It ought to work well. Yes, okay, but surprisingly, um, it may not. And then we have things like, um, I have design interventions for my system um, based on an analysis, on, based on the risk that I found during an analysis. So I understand how the system works. I understand how it may contribute to patient harm, and I've designed these interventions on purpose to actually try to deal, mitigate these risks. Um, some issues um, um, will need to be discharged to manufacturers. So, for example, the, this system will reliably respond within five minutes. So, as clinicians, you may need this requirement, but you can't justify this requirement. You need evidence that you can get only from the manufacturer. And it's technical evidence, things like testing the IT and, and simulating the IT. And, and, and it's not fair to expect a clinical organization to be able to analyze IT uh, and, and analyze software provided by someone else. Um, and actually, we can have different types of evidence. Not all evidence are of equal value. So again, we need to pick what will give us the most confidence with the least uh, cost. <clears throat> um, actually, now, there are two mandatory standards by the uh, uh, NHS, uh, ISPs uh, 0129 and 0160. One is for the organizations and one is for the manufacturers. And it's about um, risk, clinical risk, because of IT. Uh, these two standards ask for a case, so a justification, to be made um, on uh, why we may believe that we provide a safe service. And they also ask for a clinical safety officer to be in charge of that. Uh, so, this one, these two standards are not optional anymore. They cannot be ignored. Uh, they ask for specific deliverables, the justification. And having a policy for these standards is not enough. So now, we actually need to go and see what the standards ask for and provide these documents. And, and, and these documents need to be convincing. So just saying, I acknowledge the standards, we have discussions about the standards, is not enough anymore. Um, so when we say that we want to provide the seamless healthcare um, to everybody, uh, the risks <coughs> exist whether we choose to acknowledge them or not. And actually, there is variation in our knowledge about risk. So one organization chooses to analyze how IT will contribute to safety, another doesn't. Uh, there is a, a knowledge gap between the two. Um, we simply, the organization that doesn't choose to do any analysis, will simply not know if there are any risks. Therefore, a patient going to that organization will not know if they're being put under more risk than a different organization. Um, this triggers a few more problems, and I'm going to mention them uh, uh, in a while. So, uh, what we can do, and how can we deal with these things? Um, I'm not suggesting any drastic changes. Not looking for something doesn't mean the information is not there. Many organizations do have good processes and do produce a lot of information. It's just unstructured information. And if you look at it as you know, a, a simple in, a pile of information is not good enough. We need to structure them and put them together in a way that makes a convincing case about safety of IT. We need to start with what we have. Let's see what we do, how much it's costing us. What are we missing then? Um, and if that we're missing, is it important? And if it is important, how much do we need to spend in order to bridge that gap? So, you know, we need to do to take uh, baby steps, one step at a time, and try to see what is there. Uh, we try to um, generate data very, very carefully. We don't want to generate uh, data that will uh, shatter the uh, uh, patient's confidence in the system. We don't want to start creating studies saying, you know, 90% risk of uh, dying because of ID. This will cause uh, the opposite. Uh, than we're trying to solve. Um, that's why initially we need more data, but we need anonymous reporting. 
we need uh, the chance to harmonize adoption of standards. So we need to create something that says this is the risk. Try to, to harmonize your practice. Let's see if this will improve. If it doesn't, then we may want to have a better look at each organization individually. But we don't have to take drastic steps. Just acknowledging the problem is good enough to begin with. So what the subject needs? We need more awareness. Um, many people do not, are not even aware of these two NHS standards, and they're mandatory standards. Uh, um, three years ago, only about 15-20% uh, of trusts were aware of the standards. This has improved now quite a lot, but still. We need more openness. Um, and actually, we need the framework <coughs> to enable this openness. We don't want a community framework uh, that the instance we talk about uh, an adverse effect, someone needs to be punished. Otherwise, we'll not get any safety benefit. We need the roadmap forward. What it is that we need to do exactly? Uh, do we need to perform more analysis? Do we need to perform to gather more data? Do we need a collaboration between trusts? What? Um, we do need more data. We do need better data as well. And we need to appreciate IT as a contributing factor, not only as root cause. And finally, we need to put pressure on the manufacturers to aim for better quality. Same thing that we do with medical devices. Actually, in medical devices, manufacture, when it comes to medical devices, manufacturers are quite good because they have self-regulated themselves uh, because they want to sell and they don't, don't want to cause harm. But in this case of IT, we're still, uh, um, there is a, a bit of a lag and manufacturers have not coordinated themselves well enough. So asking them, why is your system good? Why is it safe? You know, it will put a bit of pressure on them. Um, so how practitioners can be helped? Understand the basics of IT safety. Not the technical bits, but understand how it can fail. So clicking on the wrong, uh, on the wrong uh, item on a drop-down menu is not the clinician's fault. Uh, not necessarily. It may be the bad design of the computer. It might be uh, the pressure that the organization put the clinician under. It can be many, many things. Uh, clinicians need to understand that you know, just saying, oh, it was uh, this person's fault uh, is not good enough anymore. We need to empower uh, um, organizations with the capability to, uh, um, to interview manufacturers. We need to be able to give them good information so when they go to manufacturers, they can ask for specific things. I have heard many times this phrase. This is my system. This is the health IT software that, uh, that I'm giving you. Take it or leave it. Okay, but we do have more tools. You know, the standards are mandatory now. You can go to manufacturers and tell them, you know, I have to comply with this. How are you going to help me? And actually, it's good, it's better to ask them before contracting any equipment. Um, if you do that before contracting any equipment, surprisingly, the rate of this response will drop um, um, a lot. Um, and finally, we need to train or uh, provide assistance uh, on complying with the health IT standards. It's not fair to clinicians to discharge uh, uh, assessment of technical risk on them. Uh, um, we should not expect clinicians to be able to analyze uh, if uh, the uh, interface, the user interface of, a software, of an IT system is good enough. We shouldn't be, it's not fair to expect clinicians to, to analyze the interoperability between the two systems. Clinicians should uh, uh, um, um, articulate requirements to manufacturers that are useful for them in order to perform uh, whatever they need to do uh, or, and deliver the healthcare service that they need. Uh, they should not be there to make these requirements into technical specification for the system. So, uh, finally, IT is not innocuous. It can contribute to um, adverse events. That's, that's uh, not questionable anymore. There is overwhelming consensus and cannot be ignored. However, risks should be appreciated and we need to uh, give a commensurate re response to that. So, if the risks are high, we need to invest more effort. If the risks are low, we need to see and assess what needs to be necessarily present, and if there's anything that we can do uh, that is cost-effective, we must do it. <laughs>